Fostube friends. Welcome to my channel. My name is Chris. Today is Tuesday, October 31st, 2023, and I'm here to share my stitching with you for the month of October. Um, it's been another month where I don't feel like I've done a lot of stitching, but I think I've stitched a lot on a few things. Um, so yeah, like I actually have one FFO to show you. I've got two FOs or finished objects. I actually have three new starts um, and yeah, and a couple of whips. So let's get started and jump in and I'll show you where things are at. So the first thing I'm gonna share with you is my uh, temperature cell that I'm doing this year. It's the Small Hearts Yearly Temperature Cell. This is a pattern by Apricot Polka Dot from Etsy. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm working a little bit behind on this, but um, not too far and I usually, every now and then on a Sunday, I pick it up and sort of catch up to where it needs to be. But I'll put a photo in here of where it would have been the last time that you saw it. And then here is where we're at now. So yeah, so I've added a couple more weeks on there. So still some warmer temperatures there. Um, I believe that would have been early October maybe. And, uh, but now the temperatures have cooled off a little bit. I, um, I don't know if you noticed in my intro photo, I usually take a photo of my, out the back of my house, um, every time I film a video just of what the weather looks like that day. So I don't know if you noticed that, but um, I'll put a little clip in here. Uh, this is what it started doing last night, which it's a little bit early for us to get any significant snow um, this early in the season. Uh, it's not unheard of. We'll sometimes have snow at Halloween. Um, but yeah, so great big snowflakes. It snowed um, fairly steadily for a while. So um, this is what it looks like this morning. So yeah. <laughs> Hello, winter. <laughs> um, the temperature is supposed to warm up, so uh, it should hopefully melt. Um, we've had the odd year where snow starts fairly early in November and stays all season. We have other years where snow doesn't sort of stay until mid to late December, so we'll see what kind of year it's gonna be. But but yeah, like we probably had a good three, three inches of snow based on what's sitting on the railing of my deck right now. But um, so yeah, so those, those hearts on my temperature cell are going to start to um, start getting into the greens and blues again soon I think so I think it was down to minus one um, last night so. so that is my temperature cell uh, the next thing I will show you then um, I have my three focus um, projects so my small focus project was the Leaves of Love Clematis, which is a Talon emblem pattern, and it's actually a companion piece. I'll show you what it'll look like when it's finished here. And then here is where it was the last time you would have seen it. And here it is now. So I actually was able to get this finished this month. So this is a companion piece. So this is Leaves of Love Clematis. And then the companion piece I um, finished um, a little while ago. I will point out, so the chart comes with these little um, metal uh, plaques, I guess, uh, that say tell an emblem. And then they recommend you put a button in the middle of the flower. I think they had a yellow button, but I didn't have a nice yellow that went with it. Um, so I thought that bluey purple kind of pulled out the blues in the bird and the vase. So I put that one there. And then um, the companion piece is the Leaves of Love Dogwood. And I finished this one quite a while ago. So here it is. And so I put kind of a little gray white button in the middle of that one. So yeah. So now I gotta get some measurements on these and then try and find um, some frames to frame the two of them the same and then I can get them hung up. 
So that was my small focus project. So I actually finished it, which meant I could start a new uh, small focus project. So the next one I had kind of lined up to do is I've been wanting to start this button and beads lakeside retreat um, for a while. This just reminds me of summers and visits to my um, brother and sister-in-law's cottage up north. Uh, you know, my parents used to have red Adirondack chairs um, on their front step. I can remember sitting in as a kid. So it just brings back a lot of memories. And I know when I purchased it, um, the dog, I was thinking about changing to blacks and grays because uh, the dog we had at the time, um, who is, we've since lost, was kind of like an Australian Shepherd Border Collie Cross type of thing. And she looked similar to this dog, but just she was more blacks and grays. But I decided when I stitched it that I, I was gonna leave the coloring the same because I thought it kind of represented all my dogs. Because I used to have a lab border collie that was kind of closer to a chocolate lab color. And my whippets are kind of the reddish brown and white. So I just thought this was a blend of all, all of the dogs that I've had. So kind of a, a homage to all of my, my pets. So I actually started and finished it because I became obsessed. So this is where the, I stitched a lot on a few things. So, so I don't know if you can see those beads. Get the board. So you can see like the chairs have all those beads on them. The tree is the beads, the water is the beads. And I did elect to stitch the background on this one. So you can see the light blue stitches in there just cause I didn't want the perforated paper with all the holes showing. This is like a tackle bag here and there's actually a fishing pole here. Um, but yeah, just very serene and idyllic. So my plan, um, because you know, I like a good series, uh, especially a seasonal series that I can swap out just to change up the decor a little bit and see things fresh, um, keep it interesting kind of thing was to try and find a button and beads for every season. So you can see my one back here, um, that's a Halloween one. Uh, actually, let me just pause and I'll grab it. So here's this one, pardon the reflections. So it's really pretty with the colors and all the beads. That was a really, really fun stitch. So that's kind of like a Halloween one. So I think I'd still like to try and get like a fall one um, and I just put them in these uh, six by six shadow box frames that I got from Michaels. And they just fit in there perfectly. And if you really wanted to get creative, obviously there's, you can't see it because of the reflection, but there's room in there that you could put things. I know Christine over at Calico Whimsy had talked about, yeah, like trying to put something maybe in there, um, even like a little string of mini lights in there. Something could be fun. I've never tried that yet, but. So that's my Halloween one. And then um, I've done this one, which is a winter one, but I'd still like to do a Christmas one. And then I thought it'd be nice to do like a spring and summer. And I know there's the heart one, which would be really fun for Valentine's Day. So um, I have a few of these on my one, two, three st stitch wish list, wish list that <laughs> I'd like to do down the road but so this frame I'm going to use for this one so uh, they're really easy to switch out so they just have these little turny guys on the back so I'm just gonna open them all Ooh, they're a bit stiff pardon me okay so I've gotten the back off so they just pop out of there all right now I've got direct sunlight coming in and then I'm just gonna pop this guy it just sits right in there. There's a little lip that it just sits on and it's in there. And so that can just sit in there. The nice thing about these frames is you can just sit them on a shelf, but they also have the hangers if you wanna if you wanna hang them up on the wall. So yeah. I don't know. Can you see that? I know, there's a lot of reflection. It's a funny day. So that was Again, my small focus project that I started and finished in the month of October. Um, so that means uh, in November, I can pick a new one. And so I think my next small focus project 
is going to be my um, awesome pattern studio whip it that I'm doing um, and here's what it looks like right now or this is going to be my starting point so we'll be working on that um, next month okay so that takes us on to my medium focus project which is my DMC chart looks like this when it'll be finished and um, here's where it was the last time that you saw it and here it is, I can't do a side by side with this one, but it's not very exciting. So this is one that I didn't get as much stitching on as I should have, or maybe would have liked to have. I kind of mid month fell into a little bit of a stitching slump and just wasn't feeling the desire to sit down and pick up these whips and stitch. It was just occupying my time with other pursuits. Um, but then uh, I will share with you in a couple of minutes something that did um, get me back into my stitching. But So basically I've just completed the header uh, for column 13, that DMC up there, and then I put in the numbers that are going to be but I still have to put in all the colors. And that's it, so again, not much at all. There are um, 20 columns, so I'm on column 13. So I have, what, seven more to go? They don't take a terribly long time to stitch, but you know, it's good retreat stitching, but it's not really interesting stitching because you're just stitching squares of color, but I really like the overall effect of how it looks and I do plan to finish it as a um, as a book that I can use as a reference to uh, if I'm sort of switching out colors that type of thing so so that was my medium focus whip and then uh, my large focus whip as you know I finished um, behind the bit in September and so um, now my large focus is walk with dog that will look like this when it's finished and this is the one I mentioned last month that I have decided to restart on 25 count and I'm doing it one over one I was just finding the two over one on the 18 count Ada was getting a little bit tight especially if I tried to um, sort of color complete in sections because there just was so many threads being carried because there's a lot of color changes so I thought maybe the one over one would allow me, um, like my stitches would probably lay neater, that type of thing. So I haven't done a whole lot more on this, but I will show you the little bit that I have, or if you didn't catch my last video, pardon me as I just grab it here. And again, I have this in a hoop, um, and I know it's a big mess. Like again, these are how many, co how many colors there are. Um, so I'm almost done page one. I have to do another sort of, I'm working, um, I'm kind of doing a modified version of Royal Rose, uh, which is a technique um, put out there by another floss tuber. If you're interested, you know, leave a comment down below if you want more information about that. And um, so I'm working in columns that are like 10 by 20. So I think the, this is like um, 40 stitches maybe here. And so there's another 10 by 20 here that will complete this page. Um, so yeah, I'm, you know, it's getting there, but I do find on the darker fabric, which I did purposely pick because I didn't want the white maybe peeking through between the stitches. So I picked the darker fabric and um, because it's one over one on 25 and it's smaller, I do find it harder to maybe work on this for extended periods of time just because it's a little bit more of a strain on your eyes. I do use magnification, which obviously makes it much easier. But uh, but yeah, so that's where that's at. I'm just gonna keep working away at it. It's like behind the bit, it'll eventually get done someday. Maybe. <laughs> so those were all of my focus projects. But as I said, um, you know, mid-month, I fell into a little bit of a slump and wasn't doing much stitching but I really kind of wanted to get back into it so I was sort of thinking what would I be excited to stitch and obviously I was running through all the whips that I have in my whip pile um, but yeah like any good 
um, cross stitcher, I decided I probably needed a new start to get me excited about stitching again. So I had seen this chart a while ago and thought this might just be the ticket. So it's this one. I'm calling it Rainbow Block Sampler. Um, it's by Vidsters on Etsy and uh, she has a, you calls it by some different names um, on the listing and when you get the PDF type of thing. But I'm just gonna, in my mind, it's gonna be the Rainbow Block Sampler. And I thought I'd have a little bit of fun with this one. I thought um, Vivster's patterns are all Pattern Keeper compatible, or I believe they're all are. Um, so I decided I'd put it in Pattern Keeper and I was gonna color complete uh, because that's kind of fun. And I also thought I've been wanting to try, I stitch in hand, but I do, I call it poke and pull, right? I poke my needle through, pull it out at the bottom, poke it back up. So I thought I wanted to try and teach myself to use the sewing method and I thought this might be a really good project to do it. It's not huge, it's in blocks of color, so I don't have to be traveling you know, great distances and figuring out how to do that and it would really allow me to practice the technique. So I've been having a lot of fun doing that and I've been a little bit obsessed with it because I wanna see it all come together. Um, Cause like when I look at, at when I look at this mock-up, I, I love how that looks. But I have to be honest, when I'm stitching it, I, um, I'm i like, is that really gonna look like that when it's done? So I think that's driving me to keep stitching because I want to see, is it gonna look like the mock-up when I'm done? So this is what I have so far. So yeah, so because I'm color completing, blocks aren't necessarily finished unless they are a solid color. There are a few blocks that are finished that have two colors in them that you can sort of see there. Now Visitor in the mock-up shows this also in black, which originally that was my plan. But this color down here is 939, which is that really deep, deep blue. And when I put that on the black, I thought, I don't think you're gonna see that. So I decided to stick with the white. So this is what I have so far. So that's basically like, these are all corner ones. So that's how big it's gonna be. Like that's a corner, that's a corner, and this is a corner. So that's how big it's gonna be. And yeah, that's where I'm at so far. I think there's 25 colors. And um, I don't know, I might have eight or so completed. I'm not sure. But yeah, so I'm having a lot of fun with that. And I'm gonna stitch on that again um, later today, I think. Um, and so then the other, so that was my, technically my second new start because Lakeside Retreat was my first new start, which I also finished. So that was one of my finishes. And um, the Talon Emblem, um, Leaves of Love, uh, Clematis was my other finish. So my last new start and the last, uh, whip that I'm going to share with you is a Christmas stitch along by Doreen Jones. This is a free stitch along that she is offering through her Facebook page, which I'll link down below. Um, she is going to rele release a, a section of it every Friday. So last Friday was the, um, the first section and it's kind of like the borders. So this is what I've stitched so far. And so I think there's a number more of these blocks and then there's like a holly berry border all the way around the outside. So I have quite a bit still to stitch in this first section. I don't know that I'll get it done before Friday, but I'm, I'm gonna try. I'm gonna get working away at it. Um, so really pretty colors. This is the color palette here. And then there's a few on the back. That's the color palette for that. So, um, so yeah, I, I really like Doreen Jones' art style, and um, I've stitched a couple of her little things in the past and always really enjoyed it. So I'm really looking forward to seeing what she's gonna put in the stitch along. Oh, well, I'm showing you color palettes. This is the color palette for that um, rainbow block pattern. So lots of fun colors. So I think that is all of what I have been stitching. So yeah, so my two finishes are the 
Lakeside Retreat and the Tell an Emblem Leaves of Love. My three new starts were the Lakeside Retreat and then the Christmas Cell and the Rainbow Block Sampler. And then I mentioned I had one FFO. So that is my behind the bit that I was able to take to the framer. I went to our local Michaels, um, was really happy with the service that I got there and uh, they had a 50% off sale. So that was perfect. I was able to actually frame it up fairly um, nicely with a double mat and um, a higher end frame that I thought were perfectly with it. So I'm gonna put in a little video clip here it's kind of big. I kind of wanted to take it off the wall and, and show you in this video, but it, it was a little, um, took a bit of effort for my husband and I to get up there and get it centered and everything. So I figured it's probably just better if I just do a little video clip and show you it. So um, I'm going to stick that video clip in here. Here's Ollie sleeping on his bed on the couch. There's our snowy. October 31st morning. There's my stitchy spot. And there is my horse. Oh, I just love him. I'm so happy with how he looks hanging here on my wall. I can see him every day and it brings me so much joy. Thank you so much for letting me share him with you. So yeah, doesn't he look great? Oh, I, I can't, I couldn't, I'm, I'm thrilled. I couldn't be happier. I, you know, it was worth the five years of stitching to get him up there um, on the wall. It's I, where I sit to watch TV in the evenings. I can look at him and yeah, just makes me so happy. So thanks for letting me share him with you. So um, moving on. Um, uh, so I have decided my next section is kind of haul happy mail type thing. I'm, I'm always struggling to find a name for it that I like. And um my friend uh, Mel from down in uh, Tasmania, she, um, her channel is Patchy Pony Stitcher, and she said she had heard another floss tuber referring to Hall as Future Fun, and she was maybe going to call it that. And I really like that terminology too. Uh, so I hope whoever coined that term doesn't mind if I borrow it. Mel, I hope you don't mind <laughs> if I borrow it. Um, so I only have a little bit of future fun to share with you today because I've been good and I uh, haven't been purchasing a lot of stuff. So took a road trip with my sister um, a couple weekends ago down to visit with my um, brother and was going by Stitch It Central in London. So I asked my sister if we could stop for a little bit. Um, turned out that they were having an open house. So uh, one of the first things I got was this tiny modernist pattern. Um, Hen's Halloween Tea. This uh, was actually just a gift from them. Uh, I think the first 25 people um, got um, a small gift and so this is what I got. So there, there was a lot of people there when we got there and um, I was surprised but I guess a lot of them were quilters because they have a huge uh, like quilting fabric section and I think they had a really good discount on their quilting fabric. So I think because I heard other people come in after me and they would say cross stitcher or quilter and the people that said they were a quilter they went oh sorry we're out of the you know the door prizes or whatever so but anyway so that was my um first piece of future fun and then I did purchase one pattern so I purchased purchased this Jardin Privé um yeah and I didn't look up the French translation but I know I saw this on um, Amy's video. Amy is Amy Loves Toads here on Flosstube and on Instagram. And Amy showed this in her last video that she is stitching this. And she was saying that I think, I think there's a group of people that attend the Stitch West retreats. And I think they often do a stitch along where I think, it, you know, one retreat they sort of say, okay, this is gonna be our stitch along for the next year, and they divide the pattern up into 12 sections. 
and they try and have it completed by the next retreat and then they can all share their finishes in person. So I think this is the one that they have picked to do for this coming year. And so it's all these little birdhouses and there's 12 of them. So there's one for every month, right? So this is January and this is December. Um, and I just thought it was super cute. Um, there's you know all kinds of fun little critters in there. And um, I've decided I think what I'm going to do, I think Amy has started hers already and she started with the October one. Just a minute. Okay, I'm back. That was the mail delivery um, person they needed a signature, so. So yeah, so Amy has started hers already, so she started with October, but I'm gonna wait until January, and then I think I'm gonna try and do one every month, January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. So yeah, so that's gonna be fun. Looking forward to it. So that is all of my future fun. Um, so the next thing I usually share is what I've been sewing. I haven't done a lot of sewing. I had done a lot this summer to build up some inventory to take to my retreat. So a lot of that inventory I put back into my shop. So I've just sort of given myself a little break until um, I feel like the inventory level in the shop's dropping a little bit and then I'll maybe do some more sewing. But I thought it would be fun excuse me, to show you um, something that I sewed in the past that I've never shown before is I'll often make coasters, use up some of my scraps, and I usually like to try and put some of these in at Christmas time because, you know, people are looking for ideas for gifts for people. So these are some little nine patch coasters that I've made, um, and I think I kind of made them in pairs, so like, so this is a pair, and that's their the other side so you know they're reversible basically depending on what you want to look at and there's a pair they're backing <laughs> there's a pair they're backing I love this uh, Susan Wingett fa fabric. So similar. Yeah, so the rest of those are all fairly similar. That would give you an idea sort of what, what they look like. So, um, so yeah, so I have all of those to put in. I usually sell them in, in pairs. And then um, I have some other fabric lined up that I think I might make a few more coasters to put up in there for the holiday season, so. So that's kind of what I've been sewing in the past and what I hope to sew in the future. Um, so next, fun finds from Instagram. Um, I, I hadn't done this segment for a little while, so I wanted to jump in um, with something fun that I had discovered on Instagram. Um, so it was actually a while ago, but I saw this post from my friend Kim, and I said, what is that? That looks intriguing. Um, so basically it's a perpetual calendar, which, um, I've always had a fascination with the per per perpetual calendars. I can remember back in the nineties, my mother-in-law used to make, um, these really cool ones out of plastic canvas that you could, uh, they had like little channels so you could slide the month in and out and, you know, just slide the dates, um, in and out. And, you know, I know she made quite a number of those and gave them as gifts and I actually had one that I used for quite a few years I think my mom maybe had one so um so yeah I've always liked perpetual calendars so when I saw that Kim hi Kim was stitching this I looked into it a little bit more so the designer is Star Parade Designs and I'll link their Etsy shop down below they've done um so they, they're actually seasonal so they have a, a spring a summer and an autumn version out right now. Um, but I do know, cause I mentioned in the post that they, there is gonna be a winter one as well. I believe, and Kim, you can correct me if I'm wrong. I believe the, the months and the numbers work across all of them. So it's the same color. So you don't have to make a new set of numbers for every one, I believe, mm. from what I can tell. Um, so I'll actually put pictures of the three months that 
uh, the designer has out right now. So um, here's spring. And here's summer. And here's the autumn. And um, I was chatting with Kim and she said the designer has it set up that you use Velcro to attach the month and the dates or the, like the numbers. Uh, but Kim said she's gonna, I think, try and do a magnet version of that rather than the Velcro. So, um, so yeah, so that was very intriguing to me. I, uh, you know, I'm keeping it in the back of my mind of something, something I might do in the future. Um, but I have to be honest with myself, I'm notoriously bad, like even just turning my calendar from month to month, I'm usually like a week into the month before I <laughs> turn the page to the next month. And that one you have to change it every day. So I might be fooling myself thinking, oh, this would be a really cool idea because then I'd probably just have it sitting there with the, uh, you know, the date from two weeks ago and I haven't changed the numbers or whatever. So, but um, still fun. And I think a really cool and ingenious idea. Um, the, the designer has some other really great charts on their website. I'm not gonna show a whole bunch of them. You can go and check them out if you're curious. But I did wanna show this one. <laughs> because I like their sense of humor. So this is a Quaker sampler. So it's a play on Quaker, obviously. And I think it's just adorable that, you know, there's the obvious duck standing there, but then there's some ducks flying across the sky. There's feathers interspersed in places. There's the two duck heads together that look like a heart. There's a little duckling down in one of the Quakers down in the bottom. Um, I just thought it was really ingenious and really fun and makes you smile. Um, so kudos to them. I think that's great. So you should go check out their, check out their, um, Etsy shop. They've got some fun stuff. So, so that is fun finds on Instagram, star parade designs, go check them out. Um, so I think that's just about it. The only thing I was just going to do is briefly go over some plans. Um, I'm having so much fun with my, uh, rainbow block sampler. I think I'm just going to give myself permission to just keep working on that for now. I am feeling a pull to go back to my focus project. So at some point I hope to get back on track with that, but it's my stitching my rules so I can do whatever, whatever I want and um, sort of see where we go. Now, the one thing I am thinking I probably should have another new star is, um, I don't know if you remember a while ago, this was in one of my um, videos as a purchase that I had made. And this is a trivet that you make. And I had thought this would be a nice companion piece um, for my mother-in-law um, to go with the bell pull that I made her and gave her for Christmas last year. So I'd kind of like to make this and give it to her for Christmas this year. So I probably should get started on that because there's probably more stitching there than I think. Especially if you have to do all of this back stitching around the edge, which I don't mind doing, but I think that's going to take a little bit of time. So I might open that up this week and just see sort of what all's involved in it. And, uh, maybe get started on it as well. So, so yeah, my stitching over the next month might be a little bit all over there. So come back next month and see what I ended up, <laughs> what I ended up doing or not doing. But, um, but yeah, thank you so much for, um, stopping by today. I know there's lots of content out there, um, on YouTube, on FlossTube specifically to watch. So I appreciate anybody that takes the time to sit down and visit with me and let me share my stitching with you. Um, and uh, yeah, you know, for my subscri subscribers and returning viewers, I really appreciate you guys. I value the friendships that I've made over the years, um, being part of this community. And um, again, I just thank you for giving me this opportunity to um, share my stitching and what I've been up to. Uh, so thank you so much. Um, until next time.